Hi everyone. So this time I'm going to be talking about Newton's second law in more detail and、uh, what. The forces are in our questions when we are solving F net equals mass times acceleration. Ninety percent of the time, the forces that we、uh, deal with in, in our questions are weight, which is the force on the object from Earth, and that force I told you is mass times acceleration of Earth. That's Weight, or、um, there are another force that comes into play when we are solving, you know, prob physics problems is、um, tension. This is the force that due to the to due to a rope or a string or something like that. So these are so for example, if there is a box here and there is a string or a rope or something attached to it, and you're pulling it this way, there is a tension. There is a force due to the tension in the string. So or the rope, F of t. Third, there is this force that we call it. Normal force, normal force, that are essentially support forces. Imagine this marker. If I let it go, it drops on the board because there is no support underneath this. Now, imagine I'm putting <coughs> putting my hand beneath this guy and I don't let it fall down. Right. This way, you know if it is not moving. Now the marker is not moving. If this is not moving, I know net force is dead zero because if no motion is the first law, is law of inertia, no force, right? So the but I already know because of Earth, I always have the weight on from Earth due to this. So. If this is not moving, then there has to be some sort of a force acting exactly the same amount, but upwards on this marker, so that this marker stays stationary. Right? That is the normal force. We call it support, or basically support force. Let's say here is a table. Here is a notebook on the table. If I let the let the let the notebook go, it drops down by its weight. Now, what table does? Table basically prevents this from falling and you know following this force. Table exerts a normal force exactly the same amount. But with in the opposite direction, so so such that this doesn't fall down. We call this normal force. Okay. So if you have floor, table, some sort of a support, you always have a normal force. We don't forget that. <clears throat> Fourth force is frictional force. Now, frictional force comes into play whenever two surfaces are in direct contact、uh, with respect to one another. If there is this box here on the floor, and I'm trying to put pull the box this way because of the the two surfaces that are in direct contact with one another, there is always a frictional force going on, which is basically the entanglement of the molecules of the box and the floor, and that basically brings heat. Like you are rubbing your hands, you know, you get warmer because frictional force gives rise to that amount of heat. So basically, we are having four forces of most of the time. We are having four forces of weight. Tension due to a rope or a string. Normal force if it is supported by something. Frictional force if it is basically in contact with another surface. Okay, these are the four forces you really need to、um, watch out for. Now let's talk about frictional force in a little bit more detail.
Well, I told you that frictional force is basically, um, you know, the force because of two surfaces or two ma two materials uh, being entangled and, um, you know, in contact with one another. Suppose there is this desk here, you know, and I'm trying to push this desk this way. But this desk does not move. So the reason it is not moving on this floor, and maybe it is moving in an icy floor though, is that this floor exerts friction on this table and prevents the table from moving this way. Do you agree? Good. So <clears throat> if the table is not moving, if the desk is not moving, although I'm pushing it, this is called static friction. Static means mo friction due to motionless objects. Now, what if I push harder such that this actually starts moving? It, the velocity is this way. Moving, ar arrow for moving is the same arrow for velocity. Arrow for acceleration is the same arrow for force. Please remember that. If this starts moving, then I get into another sort of friction. I call this kinetic friction. <clears throat> so frictional force is basically two types. Frictional force of non-moving objects, frictional force of moving objects. Okay, that's easy. Now, so far, I only talk about, talked about frictional forces between like a box and a floor, a table, a desk with a floor, etc., etc. Now, what if, um, you know, here is Earth, here is atmosphere around Earth, and there are a ton of air molecules around. So these are air molecules. And what if something is falling on Earth due to, the, due to Earth gravity? When the object is falling down, it gets in contact with the air molecules around it. The air molecules are rubbing against the, the object, and this gives rise to air resistance. Essentially, air resistance is the frictional force due to the air molecules that are entangled with the object that's falling down uh, due to gravita in gravity. So air resistance actually um, gets greater and greater as the object uh, earns more velocity. You can actually, um, I actually did it uh, yesterday while I was driving. So if, if you feel safe, please do this so that you really understand what's going on with air resistance. Take your hand out of the car and start speeding up. As you speed up, you feel the air resistance on your hands more and more. So air resistance actually grows as the velocity, as the speed grows. Okay. So this is, and this is some, some sort of a frictional force, right? Air resistance is the frictional force because of the air molecules on your object that's falling down. So now 